Hello and welcome to The Lowdown, the official Download Festival 2013 TV show here on Scars with me, Bees. We're just one month away from the biggest party weekend of the year now. I can't believe it. June 14th is right upon us. Woo-ha. He's written woo-ha. I'm not Buster Rhymes. You know the drill, The Lowdown brings you music and interviews from the stars of Download 2013. We'll also be giving you the chance to win a pair of tickets in the Dow Lowell's Big Ten. And as usual, we've got What Would Bruce Do? But this time there's a twist. Mm. Plus, we've got your requests and shout outs. Remember, you can check out previous episodes of The Lowdown over on the Download Festival YouTube page. Tell your mates, tell your nan, tell everyone. They'll all want to check it out. <laughs> On with the show, this week we've got the mad genius that is Mr Devin Townsend joining us, plus Yorkshire, Yorkshire, lads, Glamour of the Kill be joining us, hey up. Ah, let's have a bit of music, yeah? Headlining the Zippo stage on Sunday, the greatest band in the world called Limp Biscuit. It's Limp Friggin' Biscuit with Gold Cobra. That was Limp Biscuit with Gold Cobra. Can't wait for their set, I'll have a, I'll have a Gold Cobra watching them things he has me saying. Right, they should have a new video soon, but for now we're going to take you back to 2002. This is Queens of the Stone Age with Go With The Flow. That was Queens of the Stone Age with Go With The Flow. We were going to insert a Tampax joke there, but we thought it we weren't going to be safe enough for daytime. Oh well, they're lost. We'll be back after the break with the one-of-a-kind hero that is Mr Devin Townsend and the Down Lowell's Big Ten, where our Facebook mob prove just how mental they are and we reward one of them with a pair of download tickets. See you after the break. Welcome back to The Lowdown, the official download TV show with me, Bees. Right, it's time to chat to Devin Townsend, who will be headlining the Jägermeister acoustic stage. Stranger things have happened at download. Ask Jason Status. <laughs> Welcome to The Lowdown, Mr Devin Townsend. How you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks for having me. So, at uh, Download Festival, I remember talking to you a long time ago, and you said, like, you have a problem with, with like, large crowds. Has that mellowed out over the year or? Yeah, well, I mean, to clarify that a little, yeah. uh, I've got problems with large crowds and what entails a large crowd for me is more than five people, but that's wow. only on a social oh, right, level. See. In terms of performance, to be honest, the bigger the better because it's it's what I'm trying to achieve with what I do has always just been like to to, to make an experience, yeah. right? And, and everything for me is always a work in progress. But in terms of my performance and job, it can't be big enough. Amazing. But in terms of social interactions, you know, like <laughs> yeah. more than two or three people, and I'm just like, wow, I'm, I'm tired now, right? So. And uh, the, uh, the doing the acoustic stage, That's what how, how do you decide um, when you've got this like massive canon of back catalogue now, how do you decide what goes in there? I, in my head, I instantly think like the more progressive stuff on that, that was on key. Like, like how, how do you how do you um, how do you decide? Because presumably not stuff from C. Well, <laughs> I mean, now that we're talking about it, I guess I should decide, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> God, think about it ten minutes yeah. beforehand. Well, I I think that what I'll do is um, is I'll I'll just review a bunch of songs and we'll just play by ear, right? I think it's uh, it's more. Uh, it's more appropriate for me as a performer to be able to sort of wing it in a lot of ways, yeah. you know, because what I do with Devon Townsend Project and, and all that is, is so um, uh, based on, on the choreography and, and uh, the lighting elements of it and mm. all these sort of things, which is exactly what I've wanted it to be. I'm yeah. interested in that. But I really do like to improvise and I really do like to involve the audience with what I do. So who knows? It, it, you know, we could end up playing a bunch of, uh, you know, Clancy Brothers songs, or we could play <laughs> a bunch of progressive, nerdy <laughs> stuff and hope that it translates into acoustic, which it wouldn't. So, so is it, is it, is it, is it, it's just yourself on stage then? Yeah, apparently. Oh, brilliant. So, yeah. so you, you literally have carte blanche to do yeah. whatever, yeah. whenever. I'll get a stripper pole, man. It's going to be good. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. Does, does, a, does Ziltoid do acoustic stuff? Well, he, he's been coerced in the past, right? Yeah. But it takes a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> You know, he's got the problems with the audience, right? He's always behind right. the veil, right? <laughs> Me, I got no problems with that, right? <laughs> no, I'm excited about it. In fact, um, it's good that we're talking about it because I rarely think about 
anything past where I am currently. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I've been thinking about Brixton because we got a bunch of really cool things for this show tonight. Like really cool, right? And yeah. uh, then we've got these Irish shows, and then I got a Molan. So there's like there's a there's a list of things yeah. that that come before I start putting any thought into what happens after that, right? Have you done this? Have you presumably have you done this sort of thing before? Like the just, just, yeah, yeah, oh, just yeah. just me yeah, yeah. Like, and um and uh, yeah. like so so you've got kind of some oh, sense yeah. of what you've what sure. you've done prior. Yeah, but I mean, I think the thing with the acoustic stuff is it's uh, I've been doing it <clears throat> off and on for several years, and and uh, I've managed to weed out a lot of my canon mm. that very obviously doesn't work on acoustic. Right. So. Uh, God loves to try it. But to be fair, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've run the gamut of things, and halfway through certain performances, I've been like, wow, this absolutely does not work, right? Yeah. So we'll probably bring out a selection of those too, right? <laughs> well, why not? Yeah, it's, but I mean, I tell you, Second man, time I, lucky? Yeah, it's like, well, let's build a six. campfire on the stage and we'll all huddle around, right? <laughs> no, I love it, man. I mean, again, it's, it's uh, the variation of, of what I've been doing recently has been very... Um, liberating for me too mm. because it becomes Groundhog's Day when you're on tour you're same thing and the performances and you know rock move 42 and all that sort of yeah. shit right but it's like to have the opportunity to do uh, you know like the Ziltoid thing yeah, yeah. which we'll talk about and uh, an acoustic thing on in a venue like Download or yeah. or the the show tonight at Brixton or, or or whatever it just allows me to be creatively very free yeah without it being okay well you know what time is it oh I guess we got to go play a rock and roll show you know and and you've you kind of done all the variations of what you've done throughout the years at Download as well oh, yeah. strapping have yeah. played and yeah. that last year the Devon Townsend project that's and, right yeah, yeah. and this year like um, do you have good memories of the place and like oh, or yeah. are there any things that particularly stand out. Uh, well, I mean, it was really, really muddy last year. Yeah. You know, it's like just a bit. Well, and at the end of it, okay. If, uh, but other you still than the come shows, out and seen us. Like everyone was cancelling left, right, and centre, and you still came out and oh, had to man. chat with us. Oh, dude, yeah, well, yeah. I, I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, again, it's like sometimes I find I find it interesting what deters people from doing this, uh -huh. right? Like the best parts of my job are like being able to, to talk about what I do and yeah, to yeah. play music. I mean, you know, I'm I'm certainly not going to travel. 10 hours to like sulk in the back room, you know what I mean? It's like, let's, let's, let's do this, yeah. right? But at the end of it, it's like, of course the shows are like a ton of fun and I love to play, it's my lifeblood, right? But at the same yeah. time, my most uh, pronounced memory of download was as we were packing up last year and the wind's blowing and we got eight feet of mud out the back, I put all my suitcases in the back of the van and I had borrowed the suitcases from my mother and I had gone and <laughs> taken them under the assumption that I was going to be careful with them. Oh, God. And then the back opened up and it all fell out. And it's to this day just covered with the, uh, just the most, the most fine, uh, you know, perfectly smooth download grade mud ever, right? Uh, and it, you know, took you, them home. you haven't given them back yet? Oh, I have, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you have to explain it to your like, mum? Hey, mum, you know. <laughs> how did she take it? Oh, she's all right. You know, she, <laughs> you know I, was, I, was, uh, I was able to sort of juxtapose it by bringing her back something I found at the gift shop. Keller. Yeah. <laughs> While I was getting you this ceramic pot, I dropped your, yeah. your luggage. I hope it's okay. <laughs> Rough with the smooth. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and so, and um, I, I mean, it, I, presumably it didn't take, it didn't, Take away anything from the from the crowd at the show as well, like because oh, yeah. like, like so many people were like bummed out by the vibe, but it didn't feel that way from talking to people that had seen your set afterwards. Well, I mean, I appreciate that, man. I mean, it's like I I do what I do, and I and I I do it to the best of my ability, whether or not the show is as good as it can be or plagued with whatever. That's I you know. I'm here to play, and I mean, really, it's like we're at life. I was talking to the guy on the drive over here. I mean, there's just so many people in the world, man. It's like everything is just so perpetually dire, and there's just so many, with the internet and with all the options that were presented, there's just so much choice that it's very easy to be like, oh, it sucks. Oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But I mean, and the internet makes people want to be cynical. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's like it's almost like the most punk thing you can do is to be happy about. Things. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's I think it's interesting too because uh, uh, it's difficult too. It's like the this, the the whole idea of within the camp that we've got. If people are in a a shit mood, the whole thing is just like we'll snap out of it. Yeah. 
you know? Escapism for an and hour and a half. And it's not easy. Yeah. It isn't easy to snap out of a mood. But if you're around people that you respect and you have, like, uh, a relationship yeah. with, you either have to remove yourself or you're going to have to, like, work on it because ultimately it's just, it's the most infectious thing ever, right? It goes around like the plague, right? <laughs> but I think that... Um, Part of the effort of, of staying in a positive frame of mind, I'm not saying that I'm always in a no, positive no, no. frame of mind, I actually very rarely am, but when I'm around my buddies, yeah, yeah. you know, I try to be. But I think part of being out here and part of doing it is is just going, well, we want to have a good time. Yeah. We do. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's, it's certainly not going to happen by, you know, sitting back there and waiting for someone to provide it for you. Like, I mean, let's have a good time. We've got you know, a small amount of money and let's make some puppets, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be a good time on the Saturday night at the acoustic stage at Download Festival. Stick around. Devin's going to be answering your questions and we're going to talk about Ziltoid TV. See ya. More from Mr. T later in the show. Did you mean that? Pity the fool. When he'll be back to answer your questions. Remember to check the Scuzz Facebook page to submit your questions for the next band that graces us on the lowdown. Coming in, let's break out the loons. It's the Downloads Big Ten. This week, we asked you, if you could name the Download Dog, what would you call him? We've handpicked 10 great answers, but only one can win a pair of tickets to Download Festival. Let's do it. Number 10, Tony Harrison said, I'd call him Freak and he'd be kept on a leash. Hey, hey, hey. Number nine, Nathan Etheridge said, Bruce Dogginson. Eh. Number eight, Charlie Cuffley says, a Dane to remember. Number seven, Daniel Jervis says, Dog Broco. Number six, Mark Kelly, I like this one, so mine tail. Nice, nice. Number five, Dean Savage says, Mutt Scratcher. Number four, Beth Whitaker says, Mutt Tuck. Very good. Number three, Josh Palmer says, Dave Growl. Number two, Andrew Jenkinson says, Slip Mutt. But number one, and winning a pair of tickets to this year's Download Festival, it's Lewis Pacey with Kurt Cabone. Well done, mate, you're going to download. That's it for part two. Part de, if you're French. Still to come, Devin Townsend answers your questions. I chat to Glamour of the Kill. Plus, what would Bruce do with a twist? And of course, your shout outs and requests. See you in four minutes. You should spend that four minutes on Facebook liking the best new band on earth. Emperor Chung, join the army of Chung. Go on, do it. Up the Chung. Welcome back to The Lowdown, the official Emperor Chung, uh, the official Download Festival TV show, right here on Scars With Me, Bees. Still to come on the show, Devin Townsend answers your questions. What would Bruce do with a twist, plus your requests and shout outs? Right now, it's time to hook up with Yorkshire's finest, Glamour and a Kill. Hello now with Davey and Mike from Glamour and a Kill. How are you doing, guys? How are you doing, man? Good. Yeah, it, it feels weird. It feels like you've been away for ages. Does it feel like that for you lot, or? Yes. Like in, 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 in ter in ter especially in terms of like material. Yeah, yeah definitely, but um, in a way it does, in a way it doesn't. I mean, we've been doing a lot of groundwork in America and Europe and stuff, ah, right. so we've just kind of been out of the UK eye, so. Right. We're just working our way back now. Uh, so the record is done, recorded, done. Uh, how was it working with Joe Sturgis, and how would you describe it as in comparison to the material that you've done before? Uh, just a different level, really. Um, uh, as I was thinking about it, it's always kind of a, a little bit annoying, but it's kind of what happens. When people listen to us, they listen to the stuff that's out now. Yeah, of course. But we actually started writing that album in 2008. Right, exactly. And that's how old some yeah, of the songs yeah, yeah. are. And it's like, oh, yeah, you picked up the album, nice one. And you're like, oh, you have no idea yeah. <laughs> what's coming. But it's just, yeah, it was really good. He's, he pushed us, you know, we worked really well together. And I think it's just a major step up from anything we've ever done. I mean, I know every band says that with every no, album. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's just like an example of a band maturing and growing up with like touring and throughout the years and stuff and I think you'll see this on this album you know it's just a lot bigger and we're so proud of it are we? Yeah. Even talking to you guys when when the album was coming out in the first place you were kind of frustrated that it was material that had been wrote a couple yeah. of years ago do you think that this is like a true representation of what you guys are about right now? Definitely. Yeah, definitely yeah. It was a um, very frost like process we, um, we even because Joey was like, we need all the demos done before you get in, like step foot into the studio. We were right. like, 
all right, okay. And some of the songs weren't even completed. Right. So we were like, all right. So we were in the back of the van, like, I was driving two shows <laughs> in America, and yeah. I had a microphone, Dave put a coat over his head to sing the yeah. vocals and stuff. Jeez. So that, that's how current the songs yeah, are. Well, yeah. 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 yeah, one of the nights was like 11 hour drive, and we literally wrote like one of the best songs on the album through that drive. Amazing. Yeah. I had like a coat over my head, like singing, <laughs> <laughs> singing through a mic. It was pretty. Pretty hardcore, but it was, it was good. I mean, it's turned out amazing, hasn't it? So. Yeah, really good. And uh, Download Festival, uh, how's this going to fit with your set? Are you going to be doing stuff off the record that's forthcoming, or is it going to be mainly older stuff? Like, Because it's such a big platform mm. for a band. Uh, have you started thinking about that kind of thing yet? Yeah, um, it's, it's just because it's frustrating because obviously the album is not going to be out before download. Yeah. So we're like, oh my God, we want to play the new stuff. But... We don't know what's happening yet. We might be able to uh, slip a, a new single in there somewhere, but um, cool. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a good solid set. Gonna be a... Yeah, we'll be doing like um, a cover while we've been in America that's been going down really well. We'll be doing Love Gun by Kiss. No way! <laughs> Amazing. Because um, like it's, Kiss are like one of our big, uh, biggest influences. Yeah. So it's like we, we sometimes pull that out, so it might be on the cards for download. Sometimes have you, we never know. Have you, have, you, have you ever done this in full makeup? We have. Yeah, yeah, we did. Oh, no, oh, sorry, of course we did. Yeah, we did Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. Oh, Halloween really? In, uh, where, where were you in uh, uh, Halloween? Dallas. Dallas. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. nice. The House of Blues in Dallas for a uh, full kiss. <laughs> it was actually incredible. Yeah. <laughs> he had like an axe on his guitar because obviously he's, he's guitar and he, he was dressing up as Gene Simmons. It was amazing. Hilarious. I was trying to get it on the body and I was like trying to stick it on. And I was like, no. So I just got a hair bubble and tied, tied to the headset. No, no one, no one, no one tried having a bathroom <laughs> wheel on no, the end of their guitar. No, no. no, the venue wouldn't allow it. So Download Festival, you played before. You opened the main stage, in fact. Do you have uh, what are your memories of doing download before? I think, um, from I don't know, like it was just such a blur. We we're all so young, yeah. And I remember getting a phone call like a few months before saying, Right, guys, you're playing download festival. We were like, yeah. Whoa, no way, we're playing download festival. Oh, yeah, you're opening up the main stage. And I, I was like, I literally No was pressure, running, I was literally running around my house just screaming, <laughs> the house down. Um, but it was just like a massive experience. I mean, like, Download is such a huge festival, and I used to go there as a kid, and with Ben, our drummer, like, we used to go and just watch some of, like, the biggest bands in the world, and having the opportunity to, to be there and to be part of it, it was just something I'd never thought I'd ever do. So even and the main so stage is, like, that's something that some bands don't even get to do. Yeah, of course, like, yeah. We did it when we were, like, 18, and it was, like, <laughs> it's a nice little it's... tick in the old book. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, um, it's it's weird, because we speak to bands, like, often in, when, we, when we talk to bands, it's, like, New bands trying to, to trying to like get people's attention. Do you think that download, uh, much like we said to Escape the Fate recently, like is a good place to kind of reaffirm what you're about and that uh, that the fi- that the future of Glamour and the Kill is like going to be bigger and bolder? Is, is this like the ultimate platform to do it? Because it's like it's it's like the it's the big event as far as the UK is concerned. It's, it, it's, it's going to be good for us because we've you know kind of neglected the UK recently because, you know, it's trying to balance out between America and we've had yeah. to kind of balance out the pro, con- the pro and cons between, like, because we confirmed a few UK things we had to pull out because we were doing an American tour and stuff. So our first UK show this year is Download. Right. And it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Is yeah. the album going to be out in the summer or uh, the tail end of the summer? Tail end of the summer. Yeah, we've got, um, we've got like, a UK tour announcement to announce at Download as well. I've um, heard, I've heard, yeah. it's oh, a yeah. banger of a oh, tour right. as well. <laughs> yeah, so, we're, not we're looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love that, we're not allowed to say that. <laughs> Shut up. Well, 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 <laughs> in, the mean, in the meantime, uh, do you want to pick one of your videos? Feeling alive. Yeah. Feeling Just alive, feel there you go, thanks for coming in. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. Time for the fan questions you sent in for Devin Townsend. Remember to head over to Scuzz's Facebook page, address down here as always, to see who is in next for your question. Here's a hint, it's Five Finger Death Punch. See you over there. Devin Townsend, here he is, answering your questions. Welcome back to The Lowdown with Devin Townsend. He's going to be answering your questions. First up, sorry if I pronounced your surname wrong, Christopher Gilulili. Gilulili? <laughs> How would you say that? The first one. That would be Christopher Gilulili. Gillily. Right? Gillily. Hi, Christopher Gillily. Well, that's your name for the, next, for the next couple of minutes. Gillily. Like it, oh, All right, good, right. <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> he'd like to know your thoughts on talent shows, so American Idol and uh, that kind of thing. Ha. Well, um, I've kind of gotten gotten crap from my buddies because I watch them. Right. 
You know, like I, I went, hope you watch them in the same way that I do. I'm ironically on a here. Wednesday night because it could potentially lead to like intercourse. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's, no, it's, 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 no. not with us. Did I say that? <laughs> no, no. Well, what we would do is uh, it was our thing, right? With kids, we'd like have Wednesday night. We'd hang out and eat a bunch of Cheetos and watch these shows. And I think the thing that I, I found this sort of um, uh, uh, sinister appreciation for watching people get torn up because it's just such a a part of this industry yeah, yeah. it's like and if you can't take that it's like you know you're not gonna yeah. last that and long, on right? the most brutal oh, yeah. global scale and possible. personal right yeah, so, yeah. yeah other than that it's just brainless it's just it's like this exercise in in just watching you know lowest common common denominator type tv hmm. shows and you know, and for a couple of years, I did watch. I watched like three seasons of, of American Idol right. and a bit of Dancing with the Stars and, you Ever know, tempted. X Factor and Voice and all that. What was that? Can you dance? Me? Yeah. Uh, like a mosquito on a piece of hot steel, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I do dance, but I can't dance. Right. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I watch them. And I, you know, I don't as much now. Right now, I'm into, I really like how it's made. I keep taping endless amounts of how it's made, right? And right. Still Antiques Roadshow, right? So, oh, and wow. And House Hunters International. Oh, my God. You you're that? a dark horse. No, I no, I've seen House Hunters. I haven't seen House oh, Hunters dude. International. Well, you got to go to the next level. Oh, wow. That's like taking it there, right? Well, it's because it's like it's a way of traveling <laughs> while sitting on your couch in your underwear and eating chips, right? Yeah. Like, I'm going to Spain tonight, right? <laughs> I would love a house. <laughs> yeah, totally. Water. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Plus, you can like really look at the relationship between the couple. And, like, she's the one that wears the pants. <laughs> See who, <laughs> who wins the uh, choice here. Uh, Helen Lind asks, uh, if you could spend your last day on Earth anywhere, where would it be? Probably Salt Spring Island in, uh, in Canada. Right. You know, it's off the coast of Vancouver and it's a little community and it's, you know, as long as there wasn't a lot of people around and as long <laughs> as it was a rainy day and I like rain, you know, yep. and I like trees and I like being on my own. Is that, is that why you come to the UK so often? Because you well, like rain. <laughs> I come to the UK because I think uh, I've realized that I've got more people that I've had a good laugh with here yeah. than almost any other place on the planet, right? It's like maybe there's just a shared sort of, you know, yeah, Canada's thing. part of the Commonwealth, yeah. so we were like we were like <laughs> raised with all the same kind of. You, you know. all understood 40 Towers. Well, that's it. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I can't wait to ask this question. Kevin yeah. Morgan. Brilliant question, mate. If you owned a time machine and could work with any artist in history, who would it be and why? Oh, man. Yeah, where'd you start? Why well, play bass for somebody, for sure. Right. Yeah. Somebody that was mellow. Somebody that, you know, didn't panic. Not like someone like Neil Young, because he looks like a <laughs> But, like... <laughs> That you yeah. Put up with him. yeah, some sort of bluegrass thing, I guess. Well, I think there's a, this misconception, and I have to say this, a lot of times where people are saying, you know it would be a great band if you put together Jimi Hendrix yeah, yeah, yeah. and Jimmy Page and, you know what I mean, and take all these people that essentially are the, the, the sole creators yeah. of whatever their trip is, yeah. it's not going to work. I mean, it's like any time I've tried to collaborate with somebody who does the same thing as me, yeah. it doesn't work. So we end up playing this shitty blues, right? Because yeah. neither of us want to like step on each other's toes, right? right? I think you put these super groups together, then after a while you just have like this terrible band of people that are just like not used to compromise, right? Yeah, the later Audio Slave albums. That's <laughs> me saying that. Uh, Alison Ferguson says, "Do you have a favorite animal?" Cat, I guess. They're arrogant enough that it's if I if I didn't want a fuzzy thing on my lap, I'd be like F off, and they yeah, yeah. they leave, but they come back. And there'd be no like hang up. Yeah. It wouldn't be like, well, yeah, you no. kicked me off yeah. your lap. It's just like, no, I'm I'm awesome and I'm coming back and <laughs> you know. But with a dog, if I didn't want a dog me, I'd kick him off and he'd be yeah. like Yeah. Nady. And now I'm like I'm like, oh now in my life yeah. I'm thinking about the fact that I bumped, bumped out my dog, dog out. Out, yeah. you know, and that's like <laughs> I got a ton of things to think about and yeah. I don't want to think about <laughs> bumming my dog out, right? But that being said, is recently cats, I'm just like, oh just Get out of here, right? Like, because I'll be sitting there in the morning with my mug of coffee, yeah. and she just jumps up and headbutts my coffee, right? Always. And, and then, I, you know, of course, the 40 years of repressed hostility, I'm like chucking the coffee <laughs> cup, and there's coffee all over the living room, yeah. and I'm just like, I mean, I love animals in general. Yeah. I just I just don't have, right now, currently, my patience for almost everything is... is, is Non-existent. Non-existent, so... <laughs> so.
Joe Pringle asks, uh, what advice do you have for aspiring musicians? Well, I keep saying this, but it's, it's really the truth. Um, it's very easy to, to um, assume that all the things that are going poorly, either in your mix or your music or mm. your personal life or anything relating to it, your band, is exclusively unto you. It's very easy, specifically as a creative mind, to start feeling sorry for yourself in those situations, right? But the mantra for me is the same as it's always been, and that's worse has happened to better people. And I think if you think that, mm. it's very easy to sort of get back on and just realize it's like, yeah, but I do have a guitar. Yeah, but I am eating. And the final question. Brian Yoakum says, uh, what would you like to say to yourself from the City era? Nice record, buddy. <laughs> ah, brilliant end. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for your time, Dave. Thank it was you, amazing. Brother. You too, man. Thank you. Yes, it's time for What Would Bruce Do? Except it's not What Would Bruce Do, it's... What Would Bruce Do? Bruce, uh, I mean, Austin! Yes, that's right, it's Rise to Remains. Austin Dickinson is now given a set of scenarios and we want you to guess which option he goes with. This week, we asked him the most deepest, meaningful question of all. Would he rather have a willy for a nose? Boing. Or a bum for a chin? <laughs> Right, while he's thinking about that, we'll go to an ad break. Which do you think he goes with? Hit us up on Twitter now, at ScuzzTV, and the hashtag is WWAD now. The answer will be coming right up after the break. Welcome back to the final part of the lowdown. Earlier, we asked Austin Dickinson if he would rather have a boing. <laughs> <laughs> Boing! We would rather have a willy for a nose. I'm, I'm trying not to swear or a bum for a chin. You've had your say on Twitter, but here is what Austin would actually do. Willy is a nose. Wow, really? Yeah. Can what you... if the willy gets aroused when, when it sees people? What if, it, it what, give what, the game what, away. What if he sneeze? What's going to come out? I don't know. This is this is like this is the conundrum. I'd say maybe you know maybe. No, you know, I would draw that. Maybe a bum as a chin. But then what if the what if the bum guffs when you're talking? What if I'm telling someone a secret and I wipe my ass <laughs> on that nose? <laughs> That's what I want to find out. <laughs> as a chin. That is perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. What would Bruce do? Bru I mean, Austin! More What Would Austin Do next week. Loads of highbrow stuff coming. Remember, Rise to Remain open the main stage on the Friday of this year's Download Festival. It's that part of the show where you guys take over. It's time for your shout outs and requests. Shannon Thompson wants to give a shout out to his sister who can't go to download because she's pregnant this year, unlucky. Kieran Eady wants to give a shout out to his little sister, Rachel, who loves the bands but is too young to go just yet. It's all right, next year there'll be another download. Steph Foster says shout out to a two year old, uh, Brooke, who shouts, What would Bruce do every week? you got something new to learn now. Uh, ben Shadows Coldrick says, uh, every week he asks and never gets a mention. Well, now you've had a mention, stop moaning about it. Chris Donnarumma says, shout out to his family and his dog, Ollie, and he wants us to play Dragon Force, Cry Thunder. Grab your broadswords, Dragon Force, Cry Thunder. Time for one more request, Tim Thunderbolt Martyr. We've been talking about it in the office. We really hope that actually is your middle name. Billy, Billy Joe Armstrong's son's middle name is Danger, so you could say Danger is his middle name. There you go, you've had a rock fact for nothing. Anyway, the Thunderbolt wants to play Mastodon to bring th Blood and Thunder to download, which I'm sure they'll do. This is Mastodon, Blood and Thunder. It's the end of the show. Don't cry, we'll be back next week. Remember, tickets are still on sale. Get over to downloadfestival.co.uk for all the info and ticket links. We'll be back next week with Five Finger Death Punch, get in, and Empress, who, can, who are not to be confused with the mighty Emperor Chung. Up the Chung, 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 up the Chung. Up the chung, 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 up the chung. I'm sick of chung. Chung. See you next week.